to Bench to Bedside, a weekly series of live conversations about recent advances in cancer from the research bench to treatment at the patient's bedside. I am Dr. Roy Jensen, director of the University of Kansas Cancer Center. My guest today is Dr. Joaquina Baranda, and who is a medical oncologist at the University of Kansas Cancer Center. Today, we are talking about clinical trials. Clinical trials are research studies that involve people. Often a clinical trial is used to learn if a new treatment is effective and or has less harmful side effects than standard treatments. Clinical trials are one of the final stages of a long research process. The process often begins in a laboratory where scientists first develop and test new ideas. Nearly all of the tried and true cancer drugs available to you today exist because of past patients who participated in clinical trials. Dr. Baranda, tell us about your role at the University of Kansas Cancer Center. Yeah, thanks Roy. Uh, thank you for the invitation today uh, to be with you. It's an honor. Um, yes, I'm a medical oncologist and a physician scientist. Just like uh, some doctors in large academic cancer centers, uh, I get to wear uh, a number of hats uh, in the cancer center. Um, uh, just to give you an idea of how I spend my week, I have uh, one day of clinic at our Westwood uh, Cancer Center campus where I see patients with gastrointestinal cancers like colon cancer, stomach cancer, uh, esophageal cancer, pancreas cancer. Uh, but most of my uh, time is actually spent at our uh, clinical research center at, down the street and, and fairway where I join a team of uh, highly dedicated uh, doctors, uh, nurses, pharmacists, basic scientists in, uh, with, a, with a common mission of taking care of patients on clinical trials uh, in order to improve the outcome of our patients with cancer. Mm -hmm. So how do uh, clinical trials actually work? So um, clinical trials are, uh, are research studies uh, that are based uh, most of the time on the discoveries in the laboratory. Uh, these discoveries are, are based on the questions we have in the clinic so that uh, if, for instance, we're seeing certain um, treatments uh, that are not very satisfactory, we go to our basic scientists and they come up with uh, many discoveries in the laboratories with potential uh, to answer some of these questions, such as what would be a better treatment for certain cancer. Uh, we don't do clinical trials on all of those discoveries, but we choose um, discoveries with the highest potential uh, that would result in the greatest impact in the care of our patients. Uh, and then a protocol or a treatment plan is written. Uh, this is a very well-written document that guides everybody taking care of our patients on clinical trials um, to uh, make sure that uh, all the precautions are in place to ensure safety uh, the highest uh, level of safety that is possible uh, with uh, the highest potential for it to work uh, against their cancer. Uh, some trials uh, are done in order to um, prevent cancer uh, or diagnose cancer at an earlier stage, but the majority of uh, trials are, I do are mainly on uh, using novel treatments uh, in order to uh, find better approaches to how we treat cancer nowadays. As you know, um, even if we have major advances uh, now in cancer treatment, we are actually not satisfied yet. Uh, we are uh, not there yet because there are still obviously patients who are dying from the cancer. So, um, however, uh, in the last decade, decade or two, uh, with better understanding of cancer in its very molecular level, clinical trials have actually improved. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, um, when we talk about 
phase one clinical trials. We're talking about testing a drug uh, that has a potential to work, but we test it on a large number of patients. Uh, and we're, back then, we were looking for very small benefit. Now, because we understand cancer better using information from the laboratory, looking at molecular changes or mutations in the genes, we can now target those changes and therefore the drugs we use have higher potential in treating a smaller group of patients and therefore um, early phase or phase one trials are now done quicker mm -hmm. and so that uh, drugs are become more available to patients with cancer in general faster mm -hmm. than usual. So it's very exciting. Yeah. So, uh, what types of cancer patients are eligible uh, for clinical trials? So again, uh, trials are different. They vary from trial to trial depending on the goals of uh, or objectives of the trial. Um, so there is what we call eligibility criteria that is a list uh, or a guideline of a list of what kinds of patients we want to be treated in that clinical trial. It is based on safety. Mm -hmm. So we would look for patients with uh, specific blood tests that are normal in order to protect those patients who have the potential to, for instance, be affected by a drug that has the potential to um, affect certain organ system. Mm. Um, but I would say that talk to your doctor and talk to the research, um, um, your research contact in order to find out whether you would be eligible for a certain trial or not. And you're always, uh, they can always call the CRC to see if we have a, a trial available, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So at any given time, we have uh, probably around 150 um, trials uh, that are open, uh, so-called interventional uh, treatment trials. Uh, can you tell us what are, uh, what are the unique aspects uh, about the trials that, are, that we offer uh, at the KU Cancer Center? Yeah, so uh, the Clinical Research Center is uh, something unique to our cancer center. Um, the vision is, uh, so that our patients don't have to travel thousands of miles to get novel treatments. We want to do uh, phase one trials at the CRC in order for our um, community to have access to these novel agents. Um, to tell you frankly, some of the trials that we participate, we actually have safety calls um, from investigators throughout the nation, uh, from large cancer centers, and we share information of what uh, observations we have on patients uh, on certain clinical trials, and they share their information, and there's actually a true exchange of um, ideas and information that I think leads to uh, patient safety and uh, moving, moving the trials faster with those collaborations. We also have what we call IIT um, uh, program here where our uh, physician scientists are able to collaborate with our basic scientists and figure out the best way uh, to do clinical trials so that uh, we can uh, marry the, the answers from the laboratory to, to the clinics by performing high impact clinical trials. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of uh, patient benefit, what, what are the advantages uh, to patients in terms of uh, participating in a clinical trial? Uh, so, uh, these novel uh, treatments uh, that we give in clinical trials are not commercially available. So by participating in some of these uh, early phase clinical trials, the patients are able to access these uh, treatments uh, that we have. Um, as you know, we, some of the cancers we have uh, do not have standard treatments uh, 
or if they have standard treatments, they are of ma marginal benefit. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, one benefit is to try a, a new drug uh, that you cannot otherwise access, uh, but you can access it through a clinical trial. The other is that you are able to exercise your right to choose what kind of treatment uh, you want, how your care uh, would li you would like it to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, and one major thing is you're actually uh, giving valuable contribution to cancer research by doing that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, misconceptions uh, about clinical trials that uh, you hear out in, in the community. Could you could you tell us a little bit about uh, some of those uh, issues? Sure. Uh, when I talk to patients about uh, participating in clinical trials, one of uh, the questions they have is, uh, "Am I going to get placebo?" So placebo is a sugar pill that is that does not have any um, effect mm -hmm. uh, or treatment effect. Um, most trials actually do not have placebo. Uh, most trials, if they have um, uh, different uh, treatment arms or different assignments of treatment, will have a standard treatment versus a standard treatment plus the new drug or a novel therapy. Uh, if uh, there is a placebo arm, you will know if there's a placebo arm. But most of the time, the placebo is combined with the standard of care treatment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about clinical trials. And Cameron uh, Poindexter is here in the studio uh, to take your questions. And remember to share uh, this link uh, with people you think may benefit uh, from this discussion and use the hashtag bench to bedside. So a common concern of uh, patients is that they will stop receiving uh, standard of care and only receive the treatment uh, being uh, tested in the clinical trial. Could you address that concern, Dr. Brandon? Yeah, so uh, if there is a standard of care for a particular disease uh, or a particular cancer, that standard of care will not be withheld. Uh, as I said, most of the time you will receive the standard of care plus the novel treatment. Uh, the other part of this is that, which is very important in the care of our patients, is continuing supportive care, best supportive care. And when we do clinical trials, uh, the patients, take, the nurses and the doctors taking care of uh, the patients on clinical trials try everything they can to maximize giving all the supportive measures, pain management, uh, uh, psychosocial support, uh, nutrition, uh, those are quite critical in uh, taking care of patients uh, with cancer in general. Hmm. You know, one of the things that one of my mentors, David Johnson, uh, taught me is that uh, even for patients who are receiving standard of care that are on a clinical trial, their outcomes tend to be better than patients getting standard of care that are off uh, of a clinical trial. And his theory on that was that um, uh, patients are being monitored uh, very closely uh, on the trial. Uh, they're assured that they always uh, get their drug on time at the right dose. And they're constantly monitoring, uh, you know, side effects. And, you know, frankly, uh, it's just a higher level of, of care when you're on a, uh, on a clinical trial. So the patients uh, do better. So, so, I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that because uh, just like what I said, these protocols are well written to maximize safety of our patients. And therefore, uh, we do uh, closer monitoring of toxicities, including laboratory tests. So one of the things we tell our patients when they're participating in clinical trial is that you probably will have more frequent visits. Uh, you may have uh, more blood tests than uh, you would otherwise get if you are not on a clinical trial. Um, some patients, however, have concerns that uh, those visits and uh, exams, including CAT scans, may not be covered by their insurance. In fact, um, 
the cl most clinical trials are not associated with added uh, uh, out-of-pocket cost uh, because the standard uh, the standard of care procedures like blood tests and CAT scans, if you were to get that if you were not on a clinical trial, will be covered generally by your insurance. Those uh, that are considered outside the standard of care are actually generally paid for uh, within the, the clinical trials. So I, I would like to assure patients that uh, most of the time um, that, that is usually figured out uh, very well by our um, uh, study teams mm -hmm. and uh, our financial counselors. So uh, what about uh, safety concerns and how is, how is safety uh, monitored during a clinical trial? Yeah, so um, a lot of these drugs uh, that we use, uh, we have uh, uh, information and knowledge as to what are the likely side effects associated with these drugs. However, because uh, th these drugs are uh, being tested in, in humans, not for too long of a time, uh, we do added uh, blood tests and added uh, visits, as I said. Uh, and in addition to that, um, it's actually a team effort. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, the oversight is incredible when you are on a clinical trial. As I said, you are not the only one taking care of patients. It's a team of uh, doctors, study coordinators. Plus, we do have, as I said, safety calls uh, among the network of doctors doing the same clinical trials. Mm -hmm. So how can patients learn more about uh, clinical trial opportunities that may benefit them? Yeah, so one, uh, one, one stop uh, website is the clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, the patients can go into that site and they can find uh, many clinical trials on different kinds of cancer and different places where they can access those. But they can go to our website also at uh, University of Kansas Cancer Center website and there's a link there where they could click and, and uh, they will find the contact information mm -hmm. there. So if you're just joining us, um, we're talking about clinical trials, and Cameron Poindexter is here in the studio to take uh, your questions, and I believe we might have had uh, a question, Cameron? Yes, we do. We have a question from Olivia Frankels. If a patient may benefit from a clinical trial, do you recommend the most of them get involved in their specific cancer is applicable? Are there any downsides? Thank you for that, uh, that question, Olivia. Um, so uh, the first part of the question is uh, whether uh, they should contact uh, somebody for that specific cancer. So the good thing about uh, clinical trials nowadays is that uh, the clinical trials are done in a way that uh, they put the different um, cohorts that we say groups of uh, patients into um, disease-specific cancers. So that, you, for instance, uh, we're testing drug X. Uh, we would have different groups of patients where uh, some will have non-small cell lung cancer, for instance, some will have breast cancer in the same clinical trial. That is in an effort to find a signal of how active that treatment is faster. So I would suggest that um, even at early on, at the time of your diagnosis, you don't have to wait until you have exhausted all the standard treatments available for you. I would say at the time of diagnosis, you should always ask your doctors for available clinical trials for the cancer that you have, and perhaps for the molecular changes that your, your cancer have. And the second part of that question is uh, the downside. Um, whether or not you're in a clinical trial, uh, cancer treatment unfortunately has downside. That these this, this drugs have side effects. Um, 
However, uh, again, you are very closely monitored. Well, even at the time that these protocols are written, again, they are written in a way to protect the patient. The patient is the center of it all. Uh, we want to make sure that the patient is safe and the patient gets benefit uh, from the treatment. Mm -hmm. So, um, you and I got to participate uh, in an event last week that was a celebration uh, of our clinical uh, trials uh, office and we had some very special guests there. Could you tell us a little bit about that event, uh, Dr. Moran? Yeah, so uh, the because of your leadership and uh, the hard work of the people in uh, Clinical Research Center uh, led by Dr. Steve Williamson, uh, we were able to achieve a milestone where uh, we enrolled 100 patients in 2017 in our early phase program. It's a major milestone because I have been at KU for a long time and that's the first time that we have seen uh, that number mm -hmm. uh, of patients enrolled. So we are uh, totally indebted to every patient who participated in the clinical trial. We did have two guest uh, speakers uh, who are patients of ours who describe incredible experience they had uh, while they were in the clinical trial. So I would suggest that you guys look for those video. I think they yeah. may be available. And um, we are just um, indebted to the patients who participate in these trials. So what would you like to say to patients who are considering a, a clinical trial? Clinical trials are a major tool in the fight against cancer. We're not done with this fight yet. I think uh, we should continue this partnership and uh, I think we will get there uh, pretty soon where uh, cancer hopefully will be a thing of the past. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Boranda, and I just want to, uh, again, thank uh, our patients that um, are, have enrolled uh, in clinical trials at the KU Cancer Center. Uh, they are one of our greatest uh, strengths, and frankly, uh, without them, we could not make uh, the progress uh, that we've been making over the last uh, few decades. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, uh, back in the 1970s, when the five-year survival rate for cancer uh, was less than 50%, and now uh, it's nearly 70%. And all of that progress is solely attributable, uh, or at least in large part, due to uh, our patients being willing uh, to enroll on clinical trials. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Brandon. Uh, that's it for today. Next week, we will be talking about the fear of cancer recurrence and tips on how to manage that fear. That's right here next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Thank you.